Bones tonight, huh? And if they suck, just tell me, all right? Ramon, we've known each other a long, long time. <laughs> yeah, we've been friends since the late 70s. And uh, we started working together in the early 80s. I'd help him with demos and song ideas and stuff like that. Play guitar, make demos for the Ramones, and did some writing together. Even back then, Joey always talked about a solo record that he wanted to make one day. The Ramones were very stringent about what could be Ramones. And Joey felt confined sometimes, because there were things that he'd write with you know, minor chords or piano involved which wouldn't fly on the Ramones. So he always kept it in the back of his head and was storing ideas and songs and stuff. I'm working on a solo record now. I, I um, got Marky Ramone on a couple of tracks playing drums, and Daniel Ray on guitar, Andy Chernoff from the Dictators on bass. But um, it's in its kind of early stages and uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not done yet, you know. Uh, he was in the process of making this album for a period of at least three or four years. But he was planning on making this album, as I can remember him talking about it, at least uh, 15 years ago. And uh, he was always, I guess, held back by uh, the band being so busy all the time, he never really got a chance to, to pursue it until the band retired. And um, he'd been collecting songs for this album as, as far back as the mid '80s. But I guess he was—he uh, finally was happiest with the collection of songs that he wound up with. And um, it couldn't have turned out better. I love the record. I think it's great. And I think uh, what I love most about it is that Joey—it's what he wanted to do, and he's proud of it. You know, he was really excited about it. Well, I think Joey's uh, last record, his solo record, is um, this just like he is, you know, really uh, was a terrific, uh, terrific effort on his part. And, um, you know, it, it just it speaks of his, you know, his dedication and his commitment to uh, rock and roll and that, you know, he sort of really embodied that in his lifestyle. And, and I always admired that about him, that he was just completely, um, really felt it, and that he was, he wanted that to be his life. And he made it his life completely.
to put things out, but there was always uh, something he would want to go back and change and uh, um, to make better. You know, he was always perpetually making things better. So um, I think he would have been very happy with the way things turned out. Joey was into playing the stock market, you know, it was his hobby, slight obsession, and uh, every day, like, religious, he would watch MSNBC, and uh, Maria was the money honey who talked about the stocks and tips and ups and downs, and I think uh, Joey just kind of had a little crush on her, so he wrote a homage to her. I, I always thought, you know, Maria looked great, you know, and um, that she's really sharp, you know, and, you know, she's, she's really ballsy. She's got a lot, lot going for her, you know. And uh, I thought one day just I was just sitting there watching the show and I had my guitar and um, it just kind of came, you know. at the end of 1999 when he started emailing me and um, he would email me about stocks and he would say you know what's happening with Intel and how's the market looking and he would tell me that he would watch the market all day long and watch CNBC he was an avid investor he always watched our morning program Squawk Box he loved Squawk Box and he would always salute me and, and praise me for sort of toughing it out on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange uh, amidst a sea of all of these suits and with so many men. And we, we developed a correspondence. We would email each other back and forth, and he was so kind. Then he emailed me one day and he said, Maria, I wrote a song about you. I was completely floored. I was so shocked because the truth is, I was a huge fan of the Ramones, a huge fan of Joey. And I remember when I first heard I Want to Be Sedated, I, you know, it was this type of song that I could never get out of my head. I was always singing it, I Want to Be Sedated, and I, I loved them. And when he told me he wrote a song about me, I thought, what? I, I can't believe that the, the king of punk, the grandfather of punk rock, was, even knew who I was, or was thinking about me, or was thinking about CNBC. It was, it was so amazing, and it was so flattering. She's heard it. And I think uh, she got a little tickled out of it. I have to admit, the song that Joey wrote about me is the type of song that is in your head, and then you can't get it out of your head. Maria, I mean, it, I, I don't even want to start singing it because I can yeah. never do that song justice, but because, you know, Joey Ramone, I mean, come on. But the song is so great. I play it constantly. I'm constantly listening to it. He sent me the album early on. He sent me the lyrics. You could only imagine how I felt. I mean, I felt incredible. Immediately, I sent it to my mom. Immediately, I sent it to my sister. I wanted everyone to hear it, my father. They were stunned. My brother is a huge fan of Joey and a huge fan of the Ramones, has been his whole life. You know, he even more than me because he's older than I am. And we all were just, you know, in awe. years ago and said I uh, you're my idol when I was growing up I just I'm so glad to meet you and he said uh, Joey Ramon said I know how you 
feel I felt the same way when I met Pete Townsend. That's all I know about Joey Ramon. To Joey, always was joyous. And it's the only thing that can pull you out of your dark days, you know? It definitely saved his life. And I think he felt an obligation to do that for other people. And that's why it's so positive. It's still hard and heavy. And, um, you know, it has this sense of humor, this left field sense of humor on a lot of, a lot of tracks. But um, it is positive, and it, and it really, you know, was the best medicine for him. You know, it gave him a reason to, to fight, you know, to get it done. It's kind of ironic that he got sick, you know, after all the recording was done. It was just sort of great to hear his voice and to, uh, and to, you know, to realize that, you know, he, he put in some of his, um, his real feelings, you know, uh, about his condition and about, you know, what was happening to his life and, and, um, you know, that he was sort of passing all that on to everybody and to, you know, sort of maybe make their lives a little bit better and make them appreciate, you know, what they had. And, um, I thought that that was sort of an incredible thing to do. He did it in a smart way, he did it in a tasteful way, and he did it in a, in a real rock and roll way. He wasn't, you know, real preachy about it or anything. He was just talking about himself, and, and uh, I think that that was really beautiful. First single is going to be What a Wonderful World, the Louis Armstrong classic that he does in his own inimitable way. And uh, it just, it's a joyous track. It just, uh, just makes you smile. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just it's a beautiful song uh, to begin with of course everybody loves it already but it, it his version certainly does not let you down at all it's uh it just takes that song to another level and uh only my brother could do something like that enjoy it because it's it's undeniable it's undeniable pleasure and uh you can't go wrong with any song you pick out it's just going to be a great experience for you.